In today's show, it's busts time for Fantasy Basketball, Yahoo, ESPN. Michael Bolton, has he got an opinion? Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and you can find me as always, on Twitter, at RedRock underscore Beeble, and on Instagram, at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free, and we are available on all platforms. Yesterday, or maybe you know, nine hours earlier before this show, I did a show on sleepers for category leagues. I'm jam-packing so much into these next two weeks. Um, today, it's busts. So it's guys who I think are overvalued, and guys that I'm not going to take, probably, at those selections. Of course... Team fit and build and scarcity and all that stuff's going to come into play. Um, but these are some guys that I'm looking at and going, Ugh, I'm not sure about that ranking. And much like with yesterday's show, we're going to be looking at Yahoo, we're going to be looking at ESPN, and the rankings are mirrored. Mirrored. They all settled on the same numbers, amazingly, and here we are. So the ESPN ones and the Yahoo ones, it's going to be the same. But I can't do much about that because they're the ones who decided to um, uh, out of the clear blue sky, full on similar numbers. But yeah, what are you going to do about it? We'll talk about those coming up right now. Warney. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> can't fu- I can't fully do the, the full, full-throated, full-chested laugh because my voice is still not back and I don't want to crack it too much. We're going to talk busts. And again, what's a bust? It just means, again, like I said, I'm not going to take a guy usually at this spot. And the first name I've got on this is, we're doing Yahoo first, by the way, if I didn't say that, if you're on video, you can see it, um, is DeJounte Murray. And it's for this reason only. Yes, DeJounte Murray was a first-round pick last season. Right, the big surprise. Right, We didn't expect him to be that good. He moves to a situation in Atlanta where I expect him to take pretty sizable hits. He's been pushed to 18. He's been all over the board on Yahoo. He's been 10, 28. Now he's at 18. He's been all over the shop. Uh, I tend to think he's more of a 25 sort of guy, 25 to 30 player. Maybe last pick in the second round. But the way I hear people talk on fantasy shows, but mainly just on regular NBA shows, is to go, how's the pairing of DeJounte and Trey going to go? Um, people And people just say, oh, I don't think there's going to be too much of a problem. You know, DeJounte's, DeJounte's great. We know that. He'll still get his. But the thing that I point to you is he was he did it for literally one year, DeJounte Murray, on a team that had cleared out DeMar DeRozan, that traded Derek White halfway through the season, and was also not good during that year. So he got a big spike in usage, a massive spike in assist rate, somehow got his steal rate to a career high level. DeJounte Murray does not have a track record of being that good consistently. I think there is a far greater chance that he is the 50th best player this season analogous to where he was in the last season he played with DeMar DeRozan than he is to being 11th that he was last season. I think there is almost no way. So while we go, oh, he's good, he's going to get his. Is he? Will he get his? I don't know. I'm very far from convinced. And at 18, there's no chance. There's no chance I'd take him there. And again, well, Actually, that's not true. Maybe I would. But just to assume people go, oh, yeah, he, even if he drops off on offense, he'll be able to get his steals. Well, in the past, that wasn't true. He never got that steal rate in the past. Two steals per game. He didn't do it. He he might do it, but he didn't. And if the usage falls and the efficiency falls, which jumped up, maybe he is this good now. I am not ready to put my faith in it when all those numbers came in an inflated situation that was a bad team where he was in control. And now he's not. So, yeah, I'm not taking him at 18. Simple as that. I like Anthony Edwards. I don't think I want to take him at pick 19 either. Edwards is an opposite situation to Jonte. He wasn't that good last season. He was, what, 44th in category leagues? And now it's just a routine thing. He goes at like 16 to 20 in every draft. I do expect him to improve. 
but he's not absolutely elite at free throw percentage. He doesn't have a super strong field goal percentage. He's good at steals. He gets some assists, but I think he loses some rebounds with Gobert arriving. His scoring will probably go up and usage goes up. I think he's more of a mid-third, maybe late second guy. And I think, again, I'm just trying to push back on it. The consensus is just saying, you're just taking mid-second and you're right. right, He's never done it. Not remotely close to it. And is that ceiling for him? Like, where is any upside in that whatsoever? That's what I'm trying to look at with this. Like, where is the upside in Anthony Edwards at picking him at 19 or 15 or 16? Where is the upside in that? I feel like, you know, three out of every four times it goes wrong. And in that fourth time, it's maybe at that area. That's not a great record for, or it's not a great, you know, ratio, which is a ratio I have completely made up, by the way. It might not be true. But we're expecting a big step forward. And it's not like he's coming off a base where he can play huge minutes compared to last season. I've given him a lot of tweaks, an increased usage, an increase in efficiency, an increase in assist rate. It still doesn't get him to top 20, in my opinion. Maybe he gets there. He possibly could. He was great in the playoffs. It doesn't always work, it doesn't always work that way. Fred Van Vliet's at 20. I like Fred Van Vliet. I've always liked him as a fantasy guy. I've always had him high. But I'm out on that. And I'll tell you why I'm out on it. Last season per game, he was 21st. Yes, you can punt field goals and he jumps up higher than that. But that was playing 38 minutes a night. Right? So... I, I don't expect... Oh, I don't know, because Nurse is crazy, but I, I don't expect him to play that many. And it's almost... If you want to just go purely on rankings, you're expecting him to do what he did last season, but he's giving you no upside for his crunky knees and the, a minute's drop. Like, if the minutes drop, and if he misses games due to his knees, he's, he's, no, he's nowhere near hitting it. Like, he's not getting to that number, and it's a waste of a pick at pick 20. So I'd much prefer him at 28 or 30, which gives you per game upside built in that if he does play through the knees are fine. And if he does stick at 38 minutes, then you've gained a little bit of value. What value are you gaining at pick 20? I'm not sure there's much. I don't, I'm not, I don't, I'm not totally against it because again, punts come into it, but I think it just squeezes a little bit of value off the top. This one I'm, I'm not in on Don Mitchell. He's done. He's good. He's at 23. He was traded to Cleveland, guys. Like The 23 is, again, basically identical to what he did last season, which was the only time he'd been a top 40 player, and he did it because he upped his steals to 1.5. So you're expecting everything to stay the same as last season? I'm not. Like To me, he's a little third, late third sort of player, maybe early fourth, which he's been, again, literally every season until this last one. Not 23, no way. Maga Porter Jr. at 53. Might as well set your money on fire. Like, I know he could, best case scenario, get there. All right, he could become, he could be back, back, pun unintended. He could be back and he could be scoring 20 points and doing it really efficiently. But he's not an assist or steals or blocks guy. I don't think he's going to get to the line a huge amount. And with how deep and strong the Nuggets team is, I think, that if he is struggling and if there is back soreness, they can just ease off on him a little bit. He doesn't have to play 34 minutes a night. It's not like last season going into it where we didn't know he had a back problem and there was no Jamal Murray, so he had to become the second guy. He doesn't now. He doesn't at all have to be the second guy. And at 53, again, I ask you the question, what is the upside there? Is this a four out of five chance he never hits this number? It's a waste, an absolute waste of an early fifth round pick, I think. There's actually three picks in a row on their ranks which make no sense to me. I should have done it in order. I'm an idiot. Why didn't I do that? Tyrese Max is at 54. Uh, it's too early, guys. I like Maxi. I liked him a lot. I was a massive champion of him last season, going in the last two rounds of the draft, chastising Doc for wanting to start Shake Milton over him. And then he exceeded my expectations by a mile. But he was 68th per game on the back of 43% three point shooting, with only Harden there for one third of a season. Below 20% usage sharing the court with Harden and value kept up because he shot 46% from three. And I, I don't think that sticks. And again, we are, t- are we taking him at absolute ceiling alongside... Look, if Harden wasn't there, I think top 40 is realistic for Maxi. But he doesn't get steals. He's not a good rebounder. His assist numbers are super low. Like he's a scorer who might get under 20% usage. And then you're banking on 46% three-point shooting? Nah, no way. No thanks. 70s maybe? 54, again, just loses value. And then Mikael Bridges at 55. 
Mikael Bridges is rock solid. He doesn't miss games until he does, right? I find it really hard to put the faith in a guy. And, not, and this sounds stupid, right? Oh, he never gets hurt. That's why I'll draft him. I, it, it doesn't last forever. It do, I don't want him to get hurt, but it doesn't last forever. And then, oh, he never turns it over. That's cool. He also never gets assists. He's a low usage player. His rebounds aren't particularly high. He's okay steals and blocks. His efficiency is great. He also did it shooting 64% from two, or around that mark, which he's been able to do, but that that could become very good and be 57%. And then the value's done, like it's cooked. I think in Mikhail Bridges, if you're in a punt point situation, a punt assist situation, you can grab him here. I just think as a general rule, he's more of a 70s guy to me because I'm not going to overvalue turnovers. I'm going to look at everything else. And everything else he does is outside of percentages is below average. And I don't want a guy that's below average in so many areas this early, personally. Did the personally thing again. I think Brandon Clark's going too high. He's at 74. Um, they started Santi Aldama in preseason. If Jackson's back in November, then Clark, there's no way you want him at 74. Um, yeah, to me, he's more around the hundreds. 74 is, it's just, I think it's just creeping too high. Where is the upside? Where is the value for Clark at 74? I don't, I don't really think it's there. But what is there is the best tasting protein bar ever. I had one this morning. It was bloody good. Built Bar. Built Bar Puffs. New flavors. Always new flavors. Cookie dough. Covered in chocolate as well. Built has done it again. The cookie dough chunk puff. It's a light and chewy texture. Real cookie dough chunks. And of course, covered in 100% real chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough, which is joyful. Um, and it's the hassle without the hassle of making it. Plus, it is healthy for you. 160 calories and 15 grams of protein in a cookie dough chunk puff. So head to built.com to snag yourself a box for you and the family. Or, you know what? Keep it from the family and just smash them down yourself. These bars are high in protein. Low in carbs, low in fat, low in sugar, and low in calories. So grab the new cookie dough chunk puff. Go to built.com, use the promo code locked on15, and that'll get you 15% off your order. Use the code locked on15 for 15% off at built.com. Built bar is built different. Okay. Um, let's look at some more. Oops, put the wrong screen up. Wow, wow. That's the um, same one as last time. This is a better one. Al Horford's at 75. Rob Williams is out. Two to three months. That, that's true. 75 is pretty early. It's almost round six. Horford, again, is one of those guys that gets by or gets value added from low turnovers, but he just doesn't score. And assists and turnovers are the two highest correlated stats. The next one is points and turnovers. So when you're already coming in scoring low points, you're going to be low in turnovers. And it doubles, it, it, not doubles, but it gives an extra boost to that ranking formula to see him in that high. He's a solid guy. He's 36 though. Like I know Rob Williams is out, but how much are they actually going to push him? It, to me, he's more of a solid 90s guy. 80s maybe. 75 just feels early. The Thick Hogsman, Tobias Harris. Um, I think I am a TH. T to the H. Yeah, TH for life. Yeah, look. What? If they're going to expect Tyrese Maxey at 54, then you can't project Tobias Harris at 59. It's, it's just not going to happen. Harris, when Harden arrived, was like 110th. He was a fourth offensive option. He doesn't get steals or blocks or assists. He's not a great rebounder. Like, 59 stupid. Why would I do that? To me, he's like a 90s player, maybe 80s. 59 is just is not, no, no way. You can't have both Maxey and Harris, I don't think. You can't have four sixes in the top 60. I don't see how that happens. And we'll throw it in later on. They've got another one inside the top 100 as well. I don't think you can do it. Herb Jones at 81. It's again the... Oh, he doesn't turn it over. That's cool. He doesn't score or get assists or get rebounds. He gets steals, which are the least correlated stat year on year. And they're also very high or very low volume. Like, and we talk about this a lot, how low volume stuff, on a week-to-week -week basis, you've got to be cautious. Because if he plays only three games one week and only gets one steal in those games, then he's contributing nothing to your team. He might play four games and get eight steals another week, but the week-to-week -week variance on low volume stats is quite 
it makes at least the players getting overvalued sometimes. And I think that's the case with Herb. Like Herb wasn't really this good last season. And now Zion's back. And, may, and he probably does take some improvements. But he also might not. And I'm just not willing to do that at 81. Mitchell Robinson. And Mitch Robinson says, I'll take it from here. It's cute that the Knicks um, paid their second best center the most money. What, what are we doing? I know blocks are hard to find. He's got bad free throws, but don't be surprised if he starts splitting it with Hartenstein. 87 is too high. 100th, maybe. He's an injury risk as well with a lot of low, low, lower body stuff and ankle stuff, which is a, a recurring problem for him. And I just think the other guy's better. I'm not this early. No way. Bob Portis at 104. I'm going to ask the question. I'm not going to get an answer, but why? Portis was 76th last season, playing 29 minutes a night. All right, with Brook Lopez healthy, he's not playing 29 minutes a night. Now, maybe they'll play some lineups where it's Giannis, Portis, and Lopez all together with Middleton. Now, maybe that'll happen early on. But this is just ostensibly a backup that I'm taking in round nine? No. Jeremy Grant at 74. Now, I've talked about the Jeremy Grant one a million times. This is... The same Jerry Grant output as him in Detroit. Is he the number one option in Portland? No, he's number three. Is he a 3 and D guy like he was in Oklahoma City in Denver? Because if he is, he's 150th best player. He doesn't rebound. His steals and blocks aren't particularly high. He's not the most efficient player. He's not a great free throw shooter. He doesn't get to the line. Like, how's he going to... What's he going to do? Is he going to think he's still the man and try and get all the usage? That won't go particularly well. And you, know, you can quabble or squabble, quabble, whatever quarrel with where I had him which I think is like at 100 maybe where do I even have Jeremy Grant like 120 I've got him I'm not particularly high on him because he's a low rebound low assist low steal okay blocks but efficiency is an issue I well, actually his free throws have improved I apologize for that. that was a mistake for me um, but yeah like I don't expect him to replicate last season the rabbit hunter Alex Caruso be quiet. I'm hunting rabbits. Yeah, Lonzo's out. He might be out for the whole year. Crusoe's probably going to be the starter. But 100? I think you're taking so much value away. It, it, a lot of it comes in steals. But Dasunmu is there. Dragic is there. Kobe White is there. Those guys are still... It's not like what's the situation where Dasunmu put up numbers last season when everyone was out and he played 40 minutes. Crusoe's not doing that. And he can be bad with his shooting at times. He's a low usage, low scorer. It's just like some assists and steals. And, and that is valuable. But at 100, you're losing it. People will be against this one, I know. And people that think that I'm a Raptors hater. Good, I am. I hate all you guys. I hate Canada. Toronto, the Raptors, you all suck. You're all the worst. I hope you all lose every single game. Gary Trent is at number 80, 88. And when you look at what he did last season, he was 72nd per game. And not much has changed in Toronto. So I was debating having this as a bust. But I just... I, I, I look at this and go, I do think... And they did start small again. I think at some point he's going to move to the bench and pressure that you was going to start. I think that's going to happen. I'm also not willing to bank that he's going to put up those insane steal numbers. Again, steals once again, are the least correlated number year on year. Players' steal numbers vary the most out of every category. Next is free throw percentage, by the way. Um, so I'd, I'd have to expect him to do basically the same sort of thing and not lose minutes and not lose his starting spot. I'm not willing to bank on all of those things happening. Like Again, he did start today and he shot really well. Didn't have a steal though. I mean, limited minutes. But I'm just not willing to do it there. And I could be wrong. I'm definitely not taking D'Anthony Martin at 92. I, I don't see the point of it. Maxi Harden, Harris, they're all going to play ahead of him. There's Thibel still on the bench. Milton is there. They're going to play him at all. Cork Mars. I like Melton a lot. I don't think he's playing 27 minutes, 26 minutes, which is probably what he needs to be the 92nd best player. Steals, yes, they're great. Can get some blocks, sure. But 110, 120 is more realistic, I think, for Melton. Andy Wiggins at 90. You probably got to be punting free throws there, but because it's a name, because he plays for the Warriors, because he was great in the finals, 
people who maybe aren't as switched on to fantasy will start taking him there or go earlier. And I think it's a mistake. I just He's not the greatest category league player. We've debated this time and time again. What about the pencil, Harrison Barnes? Barnesy! Barnes was really strong last season. I, I, he was 95th. So we expect him to be the same with a full season of Sabonis, with maybe a good Darren Fox and with Keegan Murray instead of Trey Lyles or Marvin Bagley next to him? No, nah, we don't. So, yeah, it's a, it's a waste. What are we doing? The most inept defensive stat accumulated out of everybody who's a forward, I reckon, in the NBA. No way. Um, And this one, Russell Westbrook. Price of the brick going up. It looks like he's locked in as a starter. He's at 109th. But with the Lakers bringing in Dennis Schroeder, bringing in Patrick Beverly, I think they're way more comfortable. And Russ is not going to change, let's be honest. They're way more comfortable playing him 30 minutes, 27, benching him, sending him home, trading him. And in category leagues, someone said to me, all you've got to do is punt turnovers for Russ. And why wouldn't you take him in category leagues? Well, his field goal percentage is horrible. His free throw percentage is horrible. And there is the risk of a, a, a send home, a benching, low minutes. He, he will help certain teams, but as a blanket number, I don't like it. Mo Bumba. One, two, three, four, five. I took Mo Bumba with the last pick in a mock draft I did yesterday. He was higher than this. They bumped into 118. But realistically, he's probably a 17-minute-a-night player behind Wendell Carter Jr. Maybe they make the mistake and play him more. And if you want to take him in the last round, that's fine. But I tried to look at these guys who are going to be taken in round 10, which is your active lineup. And I'm not taking him to be a starter on my fantasy team. Nor am I taking Tyus Jones, who just misses that cutoff at 122. Why? What are we doing? Waiting for Morant to get hurt? Foolishness. No way do I take Tyus Jones at 122. None whatsoever. And let's go to ESPN busts, which are the same because their rankings are the same. But we'll do it anyway. I just noticed I spelt Fred Van Vliet's name wrong. Al. Um, look at Anthony Edwards at 21. A little bit better than Yahoo, but still too high. Van Vliet's at 18. Worse than Yahoo. Not interested. Mitchell at 23. Absolutely identical. Clay Thompson at 63. I just think the 15 back-to-backs, he's probably going to miss. His efficiency was off last season. He always struggles with rebounds, assists, steals, blocks. He's not great with those numbers. I just think 63 is probably 15, 20 spots too high. Wouldn't you know it that Yahoo made a, I thought, big mistake putting Michael Porter Jr. at 53. I thought they made a big mistake putting Tyrese Maxey at 54. ESPN, through pure luck, through pure happenstance, put Michael Porter Jr. at 53 and Tyrese Maxey at 54. That's the most sus thing I've seen, honestly. I'm not taking Porter at 53. I'm not taking Maxi at 54. They've got Bridges at 57, who's at 55 on Yahoo. I've already detailed that. Now, they've also got my mate, Yusuf Nurkic. No question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. He's at 59. Now, it is very easy for Yusuf Nurkic to be a top 40 player. Give him 31 minutes a night, and he gets there. But they just won't do it. Or maybe his body can't do it anymore. And he probably loses a touch of usage with Jeremy Grant around. And he's got some free throw issues. I I like drafting Nurkic in round seven. In fact, I think I took him in a draft. Where did I... Which draft was that? I actually took him in at the start of round six. So not far off this. But I just wanted to highlight the, the number there. And look, again, I'm not... The 50s to 80s, there's not a big difference. Right, I just think that it's pushing too high on Nurkic and not taking that element of risk involved with it, which I think you need to do. But it's not, it's not there as an outrageous one. Um, they got Al Horford too high, shocking. They got Brandon Clark too high, the same as Yahoo. They got Toby Harris at sixty, one spot different to where he is on Yahoo, but it's still too high. They got Herb Jones at eighty, Mitch Robinson at eighty-two. Num again, the identical numbers basically to where they are on Yahoo, and I've given my reasons for those already. Jeremy Grant's at 84, so that's a little bit more acceptable. And I don't necessarily hate grabbing him there. But I personally, I personally, why can't I break that habit? I would not take him at that spot. He's more of an outside the top 100 guy. Gary Trent, I just went on and on about that. And Andy Wiggins at 97. 
guys who I just think are ranked too high. There are a couple of different ones here. They've got Covington at 112. This is a guy that might score five points per game. And with Batum, Morris, Moses Brown showed a little bit in the preseason, maybe to get some backup center minutes, but I don't know how many. Or can Covington actually play 27 tonight? I, I highly doubt it. He's probably just going to be a blocks and steals streamer with some threes who's going to negatively impact you, most likely in field goal percentage, which for some reason was through the roof with the Clippers when it had always been really bad. Um, I just, yeah, it's, it's a starter. I don't want him to be a starter on a category league uh, team for 12 teams. I just don't want it. Harrison Barnes, we talked about. And then Rowan Barrett's at 105. This is a guy who's never finished here. He's had one top one, sorry, one top 200 season in his first three years. He is a low rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, field goal, and free throw guy. He can score, and that has value. But this is like peak value for him, probably. I don't know. I, I, not for me. Westbrook at 108. And then Johnny Wall, who it does look like, John, is the backup at the moment for the Clippers behind Reggie Jackson. So no worries. Take him at 145. 119's a starter. I'm not taking John Wall as a starter on my fantasy team. A, his age. B, his injuries. C, the competition. Uh, D, the other usage players around. It just doesn't make sense to have him as my 10th pick, my starter, my flex on my 12-team roster. Get him 30 spots later, no worries. At that spot, worries. And that will do it for me today. I didn't have to talk much about ESPN because literally the names are all the same as they are on Yahoo. What a wild scenario. Anyway, follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Odyssey. Hopefully, hopefully I've woken up to see 50,000 subs on YouTube. If not, hit the subscribe button. Ring the bell. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.